of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, as we continue this Easter celebration on the fifth Sunday, let us call to mind the mercy of God. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take, take away the away sins, sins of the world. Receive, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in ba holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Act of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. They traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word of Perga, they went down to Attilia. From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the doors of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A 
reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or moaning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. <laughs> it sounds a little strange to give the Easter greeting, Happy Easter, so we affirm the resurrection of Christ. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. I came here to tell you today that in the Easter season, any suffering, any persecution, if it's done and endured for the love of Christ, leads to Easter glory. Here's what I'm talking about. Paul and Silas are on a mission. I hope you've been following every bit of the Acts of the Apostles. They have suffered much for the sake of the name. And now they come back with that proclamation, giving thanks that they have been judged worthy of suffering for the sake of the name of Jesus. John's Gospel, unlike John's Gospel last week where Jesus cooks breakfast and has prepared the miraculous catch of fish. Tonight, John's, today John's gospel takes place at night, at the Last Supper, right before Jesus is about to give his life. John the evangelist will be preaching to a community that was half scandalized by the crucifixion of Christ so much that they didn't believe that Jesus Christ was Lord, God. Because how could God suffer and die? But the other part of John's disciples who believed in the gospel of Jesus, they truly believed, as did John the evangelist, that the suffering Christ on the cross, that was his moment of glory, that in his death, God was glorified in Jesus Christ, that this was a triumph and not a disaster. 
So many of you have, are in situations that aren't perfect. Some of you are bedridden. Others hospitalized. Others are caregivers in that long, shaky road to the cross. And yet in Easter season, our sorrow is turned to rejoicing because we believe that even in the worst suffering, even in cases of martyrdom, that, that joy comes in the morning. That resurrection comes after, after suffering. Today, this year, we've celebrated for the first time the feast of St. Oscar Romero. Just like Jesus, he was handed over. He was ready to die for his people. He didn't ask for martyrdom, but he received it at a moment of glory while celebrating Holy Mass and lifting up literally the blood of Christ. Let that be a lesson for us, that even in the darkest moments, that God is the one who can reach into the jaws of death and bring out Easter glory, can bring out victory. And that's why Jesus says to his disciples before his death, love, love, love one another. We proclaim our faith with great love and courage. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have been commanded by Christ to love one another as he loves us. In his name we make our petitions to God our Father, trusting that he will supply the needs of our church and of the world. For the church, May she always be a credible sign of Christ's love as we share his life with all people for the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our society, may they lead those entrusted to their care with justice and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, may they feel the warmth of God's love through our attentive care and prayerful concern for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, just as you and Christ are one with the Spirit in love, so may we always remain in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial lamb who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and with the bishop of this diocese and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through Christ our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, God. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with the heavenly mysteries to pass from the former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We want to thank you for your presence here and for all of you. Please spread the news of our Holy Mass uh, that's televised. And if you need a priest, please, in your parishes, please call and visit so that everyone might be visited. We thank with special joy today those who have come to help us, the beautiful Scola at Theological College here in Washington, D.C., and also in Washington, D.C., our seminarians who have come from St. John Paul II Seminary. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica TV Mass. The greatest victims of the January 2010 earthquake in Haiti were the young. More than 2,000 Haitian children underwent emergency amputations in the quake's aftermath. The Knights of Columbus, partnering with Project MediShare for Haiti, has pledged to make life-transforming prosthetic limbs available for every child amputee. These are literally her first steps. The Healing Hades Children program is allowing Hades youth to rediscover sport and to dream of a better tomorrow. Join the 1.8 million member Knights of Columbus in helping us continue to rebuild a country, one child at a time.